Welcome to your Pilates Reformer workout. Today, we're gonna to go back to basics. We're taking it back to the beginning. We're doing Reformer fundamentals. Now, if you are a Pilates absolute beginner, this sequence will be 100% appropriate for you. If you have some Pilates experience, you can still do this workout. In fact, I think it's really useful sometimes to strip it back to fundamentals and really focus in on breaking down the core moves we do all the time, but maybe don't give as much focus to each time. So get ready to start. We're gonna place on three heavy springs and one light spring, which is three reds, one blue for me on balanced body. Your headrest will go up. If you're new to reformer, your headrest likely has a little nub on the very back. You wanna place that to the upright position so you have some support and meet me lying down on the mat. While we're getting situated, please hit the subscribe button so I can see you every week. And for access to exclusive workouts, weekly workout plans, all kinds of good stuff, please join my membership. I'll include the link up here. So in most reformer classes, we typically start off with an exercise called footwork. Now footwork, despite its name, is not just for your feet. It's actually for your lower body, for your core, to get you concentrating on your breathing and coordinating that with movement at the same time. We'll take the feet in a number of positions and I'll cue you on things to look out for. So we will take our feet. You're gonna place the instep, the very mid part of your foot, on the center of the bar. And we want your knees right in line with your hips. So your feet won't be directly together or really, really wide. They're gonna be just about hip width. Once you're there, take a look down at your toes, make sure they're directly forward. And just think about holding on to the bar like you're a bird on, the, on a perch. If you visualize what that looks like, birds usually have their little feet sort of hooked around the bar. You want that same sense of grip with the sole of your feet, soles of your feet. Once you're there, Let's get into neutral spine. So it is possible to work in a fully flat spine where every bone of your, your back makes contact with the mat, but we're gonna zero in on finding neutral pelvis and neutral spine. So if you place your hands on your hip bones with your fingertips resting on your pubic bone, we want to just let the pubic bone fall forward far enough that your hip bones and your pubic bone are all very level with each other. You will, will feel a little curve in your low back. If you feel like your ribs are popping up to the ceiling, just let them fall down while still keeping that little curve. Now, if you can keep that spinal position, go for it. If you lose it throughout, see if you can come back to it, but don't stress it too much. Let's get moving. Take a deep breath in, exhale. We're gonna press against the foot bar, straighten out the legs. Bend the knees, bring the carriage back in slowly with control. So we're pressing out and bringing it in. Now, a couple of things to think about, and there are many. In Pilates, there are several key principles that get discussed that were sort of the core foundation when Joseph Pilates founded the method. One of my favorites is the idea of control. So in a lot of fitness, we use a lot of power to muscle in and out of things. In Pilates, it really is beneficial to focus on slowing down the movement, making sure that you're in control of every part. So what I see commonly in classes is people push out with a lot of power and let the springs retract themselves in. So the way that you can avoid that pitfall and get the most out of this work is to think about almost putting the brakes on the return so that your muscles do the work of bringing you in as opposed to the power of the retracting spring. Let's take just one more like this and bring it in. Close the stopper slowly and with control. That's bringing the carriage all the way to a close. Next, we'll bring the legs all the way together. Feet are still in parallel, so both toes and both knees pointing forward. We're gonna flex the feet. Heels are resting on the foot bar, and we're gonna think about the toes really reaching for your nose to keep that flex in the ankle the whole time. We'll repeat that same extend and bend. See if you still have that little curve in your low back. Think about your tailbone kind of being your anchor down on the mat, and almost like you have a set of books on top of your rib cage while still being able to breathe. In Pilates, breathing is also a really core component of all of our movements. So I personally like to exhale on the hardest part of the exercise in most cases. So here that would be exhaling on the way out, inhaling on the way in. And it is important that you not hold your breath. The function that that has in addition to obviously providing your body with oxygen 
is that every time you exhale, your deep core muscles automatically turn on and help support you in the hardest part in the movement. It is important to take inhales, let your pelvic floor relax. But for starters, let's just focus on the exhale pattern, getting that right in. Next, we're gonna move into raised heel position. So we wanna get a sense of the heels lifting up the whole time. So if you're somebody who wears high heels, it's like you have a pair of high heels on the whole time. Or a good sensation to think about is you were getting ready to do a calf raise at the gym, bringing your heels up really high. So heels stay lifted. We're gonna press out, bend the knees, keep the heels high, bring it all the way in. So you'll see that as I press out, I'm not letting the heels lower down. I'm keeping that pressure up almost like doll feet, right? You know how they're lifted so that they can put on little plastic high heel shoes. You want that same sense of the heels being lifted. Legs are staying zipped together. You're still using your breath. While you're here, try to focus on relaxing everything in your upper body. So a lot of times what we tend to do, so on the hard parts are really grit our teeth or hold our lips or feel a lot of tension in the upper traps, mouth or face. Focus all of that tension into your core and cue it it's like you're blowing up a balloon. So your deep, deep core starts to trigger on. Let's take one more like this. We're gonna hold the legs straight now. Your knees are gonna stay straight for this whole sequence. We're just gonna lower the heels under the bar We'll lift them up slowly with control. Lower them down, we'll lift them up. What I commonly see in class is popping up and popping down. It's less about getting to the end and the beginning, it's more about the journey. So we're pressing under slowly for three. As soon as you get to the bottom, we're lifting for three. Pressing under, three, two, one. As soon as you get to your low point, lift up, three, two, one. Doesn't have to be on the same count that I'm on but we really wanna think about taking as long as we need to, to get to the bottom. And then as soon as we hit the bottom, starting to reverse. So we're not just sinking in each of the positions. That doesn't do a whole lot for us. We really wanna get the most out of this that we can to activate all the muscles in our lower legs and in our feet for a nice strong body. Let's take two more. And last one. Good. We're going to lift the heels back up, bend the knees, keep the inner thighs squeezed together as we close the stopper slowly with control. Next, we're going to walk our heels or our arches out to the very outer corners of the foot bar. So something to keep in mind is we don't want to keep the knees pointing forward. We really want to let them kind of come to the side somewhat. So we're in this external rotation with the hip. Take a sec. See if you can get that sense of anchoring your tailbone down on the mat without arching your body way up. Same basic concept. You're going to take a deep breath in. As you exhale, push into the foot bar. Keep that rotation through the hips so your knees and toes are pointing out to the side. Bring it in with control. Think about blowing up a balloon as you press out. Inhale, slow motion, close the springs. Each time you come out and in, think about the knees tracking right over the toes, that rotation happening right through the hips, not just turning out from the knee. And for that sense of slow motion, you can even think about pushing really firmly into the feet as you bring the carriage closer to home. Let's take three more. And I'll throw a little, little curveball at you. Last two, and one. Leg straighten all the way. Now I'm gonna bend the knees, but not close the stopper all the way. We're just gonna bring it about halfway in. Once we're here, we're gonna keep that pressure in the feet. Just move the carriage out and in, maybe a few inches or a handful of centimeters. I'm gonna feel inner thigh muscles turning on. You can also play around with how far out you go. Depending on how far out you take it, you may feel glutes and hamstrings as well. But experiment with if you take it a little further in versus a little further out. Where do you feel it in your body? And what do you prefer? What do you like the best? 
Breathing through this whole thing. Let's take it for four, three, last two, and one. Now let's gather ourselves in a big deep breath. Exhale, extend long, bend the knees, bring it in with control, and let's get ready to move on. Next, bring the headrest to the downward position. And if you haven't done this before, there's this little flap underneath the headrest. We're just gonna lift it so that it hits the back of the headrest and then lower it down so that it's flat. This is gonna protect our necks when we start to lift the hips up. Give yourself a little bit of room between your shoulders and the shoulder blocks. It doesn't have to be massive, but just so we're not crunched right up against them. Heels and or arches will come to those outer corners of the foot bar. We'll find that same position we were just in. We'll move into pelvic lift. This move will really target our lower abdominals and force us to use our deep core to stabilize our pelvises as we begin moving back and forth on the reformer. So finding neutral spine again. So f feeling like your pubic bone and hip bones are roughly on the same plane. A little bit of natural curve in your spine, ribs down. We're gonna take a big breath in, exhale, press up. So your bottom's about a fist distance up on the mat, not a giant bridge, just a little lift here and lower down. Let's take eight more of these and lift. And I'm not curling the pelvis under and pointing my pubic bone up, keeping that neutral spine. So pelvis and hips pretty much steady. Okay, let's take five. See if you can feel your low abs kick on. You will of course feel hamstrings and glutes, but challenge yourself. See, see if you can initiate this by feeling the sense of pulling in together between your hip bones. You want these core muscles on your low abs, the deepest layer, to really come on. Two more. And one, hold that little lift about a fist distance up. We're gonna keep that hover, extend the legs straight, bend the knees, bring it back in with control. So again, I'm not pressing out, letting the springs shoot me out, going as fast as I can. Slow, intentional control. I promise you this is liable to be more challenging than if you are going really fast and doing twice or three times as many reps. <sighs> Definitely feeling a lot of glutes here. We exhale to go out, <sighs> inhale to come in, exhale out, <sighs> inhale to come in. Now, if this gets too challenging, of course, you can lower your hips down to the mat at any time. Otherwise, keep them lifted <sighs> and see if you can find that full extension of your legs without using power to pop you out. Last one <sighs> and back in. Good. Close the stopper, lower your hips down, hover your, hug your knees into your chest rather. <sighs> Try to relax your neck and shoulders. Rock them side to side, rock your hips side to side. <sighs> Very good, let's get ready to move on. Roll on up to sitting. Place your headrest back to the upright position. So you'll lift the headrest up and then there should be a little flap underneath at least for most reformer models, that you just position down so that the headrest comes up in a little bit of an angle. Turn around, find your spring well where your springs or your cords are if you have a resistance band reformer. And we're going to take off two springs so that we are on one heavy and one light spring. For my balanced body reformer, that's one red, one blue. Next up, grab your straps. They'll either be resting on your shoulder blocks or in pegs somewhere near your headrest. These are the loops that we use, usually with our hands or feet inside them, to pull the carriage forward or back for added resistance. So grab those straps in one hand. We're gonna turn around to face the foot bar. Lie down onto your back. Your head will go onto the headrest. Once you're there, grab the, the straps, pull them forward so that you can reach up and place your right hand in the right strap and your left hand in the left strap. You can push away from the foot bar to help you get into the position. And once you're there, we wanna start off with our hands right above our shoulders. If your ropes are so tight that you need to put pressure into them to get your hands over your shoulders, do so now. Oftentimes in class, I see a lot of people wanting to start off from way back here. That can put a lot of undue pressure in your shoulders. So always we push away 
to get our hands up over the shoulders and we'll bring our legs to tabletop. Now, tabletop in Pilates is the position where we have our knees right over hips, our legs are bent and the shins are parallel to the ceiling. So with both legs, that looks a little something like knees over hips, shins parallel to the ceiling. If you're in this position and it feels like way too much on the core, you can do a couple of options. You can bend your knees a little more, bring your knees a little closer into chest. You can also cross your ankles to take a little weight off and you can also bring your feet way down. So feel this out, see what you need. But ideally we've got our legs bent and our knees not too far away, not too close in. So we'll begin with a classic Pilates exercise called the hundred. So what we'll be doing is we'll be keeping this tabletop position. You're gonna press through the straps, curl up, so you're lifting the head, neck, and chest without really crunching the neck down. We're going to vigorously pump the arms up and down for five. Exhale for five. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five. Exhale for five. So we're going to do this all the way up to 100. This is set three. Exhale. Inhale for four. So we want to really be pumping the arms, not just a little bit like this. I want to really challenge the core. This is six. Now, if your neck gets tired, you can always lower it down onto the headrest, but if you can, try to lift it up. Three more sets. Two. And last one. Very good. Raise your arms back up over the shoulders. Rest your feet down on the foot bar. You can walk your feet as wide as the bar goes and just let your knees tilt side to side. Take a little rest. Rock your knees out. Release any tension maybe you got in your low back from that one. You could also rock your head side to side. Give yourself a little release. When you're ready, let's extend the arms back up over the shoulders, bring your legs back to tabletop, and we'll continue on. All right, now we move. So keeping that sense of control in, we're gonna take a big inhale, exhale, press the palms down next to your hips, inhale, bring them back up over the shoulders. Again, we're not going so far that we're closing the stopper and the hands go way back. Hands press down and rise back up, stopping right over your shoulders. If you need to use a mirror or record yourself to check your form, go ahead. We're trying to keep that sense of neutral spine. If you need to flatten out and imprint the spine, meaning tucking your pelvis under and really getting every bone in your spine to make contact with the mat, it's okay. Especially if you've got back problems, that may be necessary, but barring any challenges there, if you're able to stabilize the pelvis, see if you can get that tailbone to be heavy in this position. That will help your core as well in most cases. So we're just pressing down, pressing up, taking care not to let the springs shoot us forward and back, not using too much power. And also we wanna keep the arms straight. We're not bending the elbows to get where we need to be, right? We wanna keep that length as we're pressing down. There's always something more to think about. While I've got you, also take care to make sure you're not flexing through the wrists. So if you feel like you have a lot of pressure in the wrist or you're bending the wrist, try to see if you can keep a lengthened line all the way from your middle finger down to your wrist, down to your elbow. I like to think about lots of energy through the wrist, like I'm pointing forward at the front wall as I press down. Good, next time we lower down, we'll move into tricep extensions, a really classic exercise in Pilates. I'm gonna bend the elbows, keep the elbows really squeezed in next to my ribs. So elbows bend and extend, or rather extend and then bend. Oftentimes in class, I see people kind of bringing the elbows out somewhere in space next to the body without really bringing, it very, bringing them very close. You do have the option to lift the elbows, which might give you a little bit more focus on the triceps, but as you're beginning, I do recommend 
bringing the, the upper arms down to the bed so you can keep that squeeze a little bit more intentionally between your elbows and your ribs. Let's take two and one. Good, raise the arms all the way up. We did some work for core and arms with hands and straps. Next, we're gonna move on to feet and straps. So just as we had the palm of our hands in these straps, I'm going to push away against the foot bar, extend my legs, take the right strap, place it onto the arch of your right foot, hold onto the rope, make sure you've got pressure in that strap, and then now this will be our support. So once that's there, hold on, Place your left strap on the left foot. Once we're there, we're gonna find a position where our legs point up to the ceiling to 90 degrees. So the goal is to get our legs pointing straight up to the ceiling, but the reality for a lot of us might not be right up to the ceiling. So I'll talk you through some of the things to look out for. We always want our legs coming back to a position where when we lift the feet up, we crease at the hips, and the tailbone always stays heavy or anchored down on the mat, just like we talked about in neutral spine. Many, many times what people like to do is try to feel like they're getting the legs so far back, they're so flexible, quote unquote, but the butt starts lifting up off the mat. So that gets us into a pelvic tilt that we don't, don't wanna encourage because often that just puts a lot of pressure on your low back and doesn't do a whole lot for our posture. So the first thing we will do while we're here is we're gonna find what our 90 degrees looks like today. So we want the legs as straight as you can get them without gripping the legs. We're just going to let the feet come close to your body, toes pointing as close to the ceiling as you can, go as far as you can without lifting up the butt or bending the knees, okay? Now, if for you, your 90 degrees is here, and that's where you can get without lifting your butt up or bending your knees, that's where I want you to start. Chances are, You'll keep working on this over time. You will be able to develop flexibility enough to get to straight up and down 90 degrees or much closer to it. Let's get right into it. So we're going to keep our arms down by our sides, press into the mat with your arms and just feel your shoulders open up and roll back. We are in parallel. So knees are facing directly toward your nose. We're gonna take that big breath in. Exhale, push down into both straps. So both legs lower down about halfway. So it's gonna be our 45 degree angle. And then lift back up to R90, wherever that is for you. Push down, we exhale as we press. Inhale as we bring it back up. So let's take a few of these. Just try to figure out if we can get that sense of folding at the hip creasing up. Another thing you can do is place your hands right on top of your hips, sort of in a karate chop motion, so you can feel if your thighs start to crease over them. If so, that's a good sign. You're likely keeping your tailbone anchored well. If you feel like you're not really folding over the foot, your butt is probably lifting up. So once we're feeling really comfortable with that, we can begin to add some more layers on. And again, we wanna really focus on slow control and control on the way up. We're not powering through this, banging out reps, letting the springs shoot us back. That's not what we want. We also don't wanna take the legs so low that we begin to arch the back, pop the ribs, have all sorts of crazy stuff happening with the pelvis, right? So everything in your torso should stay stable as the legs lower and lift. I like to always say the legs are a movie those are moving around. We see a lot of movements there. The torso, the head, neck, and arms, those are all a still picture, okay? Let's bring, take that as our last one. Now, up to 90 degrees, we're going to flip to Pilates V. Now, Pilates V is when we go from parallel, knees facing our nose, to externally rotated. So the heels are together, but the toes are pointing apart, the knees are pointing apart, and we're wrapping through the upper part of the hips. We're gonna keep that external rotation, lower down, and lift up. So again, pelvis is staying really stable, we're not going too low, not letting weird stuff happen in the pelvis. We're just lowering, exhaling as we push through the straps, 
and lifting. So this can go only as far as 45 degrees if you like. If you'd like to take it a little lower as long as you can keep your core activated, pelvis still, you can do that. Let's take two, keeping the heels together, squeezing the inner thighs while they're in this wrapped, rotated position. Good. Now flex the feet, bring your toes closer to yourself. We're gonna lower down to that same position. Keep the heels together, bend the knees, feel your heels come close to your pelvis and press out to 45 degrees or your low point. Feet stay flexed, heels stay together, bend your knees, bring your heels close and press out. So I'm bending only so far that my knees go right about over my hips, I'm not bringing them way close to my chest and lifting my butt up at this point, just keeping it nice and small. Think about right over the hip, hip bones or the hip sockets. Hopefully feeling some inner thighs here. I feel a little bit of hamstrings and some glutes here too. This is our baby frog. Let's take three more. Equal pressure through both straps. Control as the feet come toward you. Exhale. Steady as they extend. Last one. Good. Bring the legs up to 90 degrees. Flip them back to parallel. So once again, knees facing your nose instead of out to the side. We're going to go for our leg circles. These are everybody's favorite. It's the last hard thing we're going to do in class today, so we get to end with a treat. Here, we're going to open the legs at the top, draw them down, around, squeeze them all the way together, and bring them right back up to the ceiling. So we separate at the top, still in parallel, press out and down, drawing this big curve, squeeze them together before they come up. Once again, we're keeping that tailbone nice and heavy, and this can be quite small, going from 90 degrees to 45. Once you feel like you have good control over your pelvis, and the carriage and the spring control, you can take the circle wider if you like. It's more of a contemporary version or take on it than the more classical small circle, but see what works for you. Again, if you feel like your ribs are popping and your pelvis is dumping forward, keep it smaller. Let's take another two in this direction. Still breathing. Again, relaxing your upper body, letting go of any scowling in your face. Let's reverse. Now we're gonna press through the straps, legs together as you press down. Open the legs, draw the circle around, up, squeeze together at the top, and press down. Open up all the way around with control, squeeze together at the top. Here, if you lose control of the spring, that around motion is gonna be really fast and zippy and might really get you in trouble <laughs> pulling those inner thighs. So really think about that extra little bit of slow motion activity as the legs separate and come around. Hopefully you're feeling some nice work through your inner thighs, some rotation through the hip sockets. I think these ones feel like you're greasing up the old, the old hip grinders. Let's take our last one. Good news, now we stretch. Legs come all the way up. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together. The legs are gonna rotate externally. So knees are pointing outward. Hold on to the ropes, sort of right above your chest. You're gonna keep the feet together as you bring them down. Now you can hang out here. Your pelvis can curl under here, that's completely fine. Or you can bring the feet down to the mat in front of you, or even down into the well, especially if you have a reformer that has legs on it. We're just gonna hold onto the ropes here. Try to use our breath and let our inner thighs and back just sort of relax here after that hard work. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. If you'd like, you're welcome to extend your right leg out to the side, hold onto the rope on the right side. Bring your leg over to the side, support yourself with the rope in hand. And if you really are feeling like you wanna get a lot of flexibility, pull the rope a little bit to deepen the stretch. Bring that leg back to center, so the feet are right next to each other. Once you're anchored there, left leg goes out to the side. You can pull that rope into your rib if you like. 
carefully, slowly that foot comes back in, you're going to extend both legs up to the ceiling, pushing through the straps and bringing them up. Once again, the bottom of your sacrum or your tailbone is really heavy, so we're creased at the hip, your bottom's down. Flex the feet at your ankles, keeping your heels right over your hips. We're gonna pull the ropes down toward your chest. Now, what I see oftentimes, people like to bring the heels way, way back here, which can feel nice, but I find it's a deeper hamstring stretch when we align the heels right over the hip sockets. We pull the ropes down. It gives you a really deep, deep stretch right in the hamstrings and a little bit behind the knees. Good. When you're ready, you're going to keep pressure in one strap, remove the other strap from one foot, anchor your foot down on the foot bar, take the other strap off of the other foot, close the stopper slowly with control. And let's sit on up. We'll finish up with a scooter stretch. Now, coming up to sitting, I'm taking off the light spring. So I'm only on one heavy spring on my balance body machine. That is one red spring. Come to standing on the right side of the reformer. Bring your right foot so that your toes are aligned with the very, very front edge of the machine. You don't want your foot back here. It's not going to give you enough support. So really get your foot all the way up to the front. Take your left foot. You're going to curl your toes under so that they're anchoring yourself on the reformer bed. You're going to bring the sole of your foot right up against your right shoulder block. You can place your hands down on the foot bar about shoulder distance apart. Take a moment to square off your hips. So your left hip is going to want to rotate over to the left. Just position it so that it's pointing directly forward. Like if you had an arrow on both hips, both of them would be pointing forward. <laughs> so here we're just going to push into the foot bar with our hands, send the carriage back, keeping the chest high for a moment. See if we can feel that nice big hip stretch and come back in. Good. Once again, squaring the hips off so that left hip wraps forward, pressing back. If you'd like, you can take a variation here. A lot of folks like to bring the forearms down to the foot bar and hang out here. Good. Bring the carriage to a close. We're going to rock back and take a hamstring stretch. So. Left knee is going to stay back, push into the foot bar. You can keep your foot down where it is, try to straighten out the front leg, or you can lift your heel up to flex the front foot and get a big stretch through that right leg. Once again, squaring the hips off so that left hip is pointing forward. If you were very flexible, you could even think about sticking your tailbone back and bending your elbows to bring your chest down. Good. Bring the carriage to a close. Let's walk over to the other side and we'll finish up there. Now, with your left foot all the way up against the front edge of the machine, once again, not too far back, your right toes will curl under, go right up against the shoulder block behind you. Now your right hip is gonna wanna swivel forward so that you're fully square. Hands on the foot bar, press the carriage out, let your lumbar spine, your low back release. Push into your big scooter stretch. Feel that nice relaxation on the right hip. And bring it back up. Let's try again. Deep breath in. Exhale, press back. If you'd like to take your forearms down, if that feels good to you, do that now. You can let your chest come down with it. So we're not letting our shoulders sink down. We're keeping an active press away on the foot bar from our forearms, like we're driving energy down into the bar. And bring the carriage in. Hands come back to the foot bar. Square off the hips. Now we're gonna hinge back in our hamstring stretch. Your back knee stays bent. Your front leg is straight. You can keep your foot relaxed or flex it for more resistance or more intensity in the stretch. Wrap that right hip forward. Send your tailbone back behind you so like you're flaring your sit bones back, almost like you're sticking out your butt. If you need to, for more intensity in the stretch, you can bend your elbows down. Good. Press into the foot bar, bend your knee, bring the carriage to a close, and you did it. You are all done. 
Thank you so much for joining me. You did it. If you're looking for more beginner content, I'll include a link to a video that you might like down below in just a moment. And it goes without saying, please subscribe. About half of you are not subscribed and I'd love to see you every week. So please hit that button down below. And if you want weekly workout plans, exclusive workouts and more, please become a member. I'll include the link down in the description box. And speaking of members, thank you so much to all of my membership supporters. Thank you all for your continued support and super extra special thanks to the folks who've been with me for six months or more. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.